Actually, the churches have forgotten about Jesus. And the Lord Jesus told us through Paul the Apostle that in the last days there'll be a great falling away. And we see the great falling away before our eyes. They're falling away from the truth. They're falling away from the Christ. They're falling away, away from, from the doctrine of Jesus. They're falling away from the joy. They're falling away from the peace. And my prophecy for 2.19, as the Lord quickened me on the 25th of the 12th, 2.18, 2.19 will be the year. 2.19 will be the year of nightmares. And if you do a research on that word nightmares, it relates to sadness and difficulty and regret and all kinds of things. Fear and terrible things. Pope Francis said that 2.18 was a year from hell for the Roman Catholic Church. And I commented on Twitter and I said, listen, Francis, I said, uh, that's just the mini prelude to 19. <laughs> it's only a mini prelude. So 219 will be hard slog, but that's for those people who don't walk close with the Lord Jesus. We know that when we walk with Jesus, his word confirms very clearly his word confirms he is with us. And you're best to have Jesus with you than 10,000 soldiers or the biggest army in the world. You're best to have Jesus with you. So today is the uh, 23rd, 23rd, 22nd. Oh, the 30th, sorry, 30th. I'm not much on days. I don't bother about days. I don't bother about weeks. I don't bother about months and I don't bother about seasons. Why not? Because Galatians 4, 8 to 11 says we're not of days, months or seasons. And we don't bother ourselves. We're not governed by that. We're not governed by all these Gregorian calendar days and months and we're governed by the Spirit of God. These are the sons of God who are led by the Spirit of God. Everyone said amen. amen. So the 30th today, but only till midnight, is that right? Only till midnight, the 30th of the 12th to 18. And uh, I'd like to welcome Brother Thomas here today to the meeting. <laughs> Brother Thomas and also Brother Shane. And uh, also, uh, we still have uh, Sister Rosalina with us from the Philippines. Amen. <laughs> all this is good. It's all good. We're in the hands of the Lord. Though the earth may tremble and the heavens fall, we shall not be moved because we walk with Jesus. This is what I want for all my enemies. It's what I want for... Uh, Every person, man and woman, I come across daily. And I'm out there daily for 31 years. The Lord has made it available for me to do that. Because when he calls, he meets the call. You don't have to burden other people. When God calls you, he'll make the way. There's no selling. There's no peddling of the word of God. There's no price tags and barcodes on the back of whatever you're saying. Oh, God told me to write this book and then I got a price tag and a barcode and they reckon it's God's word. They reckon it's what God said to them. It should be free. Revelation twenty two seventeen. 17. The spirit and the bride say come and drink of the waters of life freely and those who come and drink freely tell them to tell others to come and drink freely. Come and have a drink free of charge. Because it's given freely, so let's freely give. It's not mine, it's otherworldly, and it is uh, not of this world. It's from another planet, the Word of God is from another planet, not another nation. 
Or maybe if you want to use the word nation, you could say holy nation. Royal priesthood. Special people we are. Because we have uh, instructions and we have teaching from another planet. From another kingdom altogether. And Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Because if it was, he, he said my disciples would fight for it. But it's not. His kingdom is not of this world. That's what I like about Jesus. He has something bigger and better. If we're prepared to surrender the immediate for the ultimate. And we've been doing a series on that. This week we have, come on in Brother Thomas. This week we have the fourth part of our series, Immediate or Ultimate, Immediate and, and, and the Ultimate. And most people, especially, especially the endemic, they choose the immediate, foolishly enough, and the ultimate is forsaken. But we're going to look at that later. First of all, we'll have a look what's going on around us. The Iraq cabinet... Uh, has approved laws to make December 25 Christmas Day. Iraq, Iraq, cabinet, make Christmas Day a public holiday throughout the whole country. Well, when I read that, the first thing I thought was Mars Hill. I thought of the Arapagus. I, I thought of Acts 17, 22, when Paul stood in the Areopagus and, and said, I perceive that you are very religious people. But they were not with God. There's a lot of religious people, but they're not with God. They have all the rituals going, they have all the uh, celebrations and the seasons and the this. But deep in here, deep in the heart, they're dead. They're, there's no life. Jesus said he's coming back for those who remain on the earth and are alive. He'll come back with a shout and the voice of an archangel, the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ will rise first and those who remain and are alive will be caught up in the air to be with the Lord forever. Have that living relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah! Living relationship with Jesus. Not some relationship that the church at Sardis had. That, oh, what? I perceive that you are, yeah, you had a name, you were alive, but now you're dead. Death always comes from being away from God. It's a guarantee. It, it, it's written from Genesis to Revelation. We become so estranged from our Maker that we, we don't even know. Uh, where our Bibles are. We don't even know what the Spirit is saying to the church. And then when someone comes along that's in the Spirit and they say something, then everyone gets upset. And they start stoning the preacher. Amen? Because they're not used to hearing that. They're just used to hearing froth and bubble and bubble and squeak. They're just used to listening to rubbish, religious rubbish. All about activities and doing this course and doing that course. And of course, it's way off course with the truth. Amen. Amen. Of course it is. So, we also, uh, like I say, I thought of Arapagus and, and Mars Hill when they, the Iraqi cabinet says they're going to make Christmas Day a... Uh, a public holiday, 25th of December, and, and they had a picture there of Mary and, and, and the Madonna and, and child, and big statues, and you know, statues of uh, uh, Jesus and oh, religion. But the Lord deals within here, the Lord deals in the heart. It reminds me of when Jesus came riding on a donkey foal and they thought, well, this can't be our king <laughs> because they're looking on the outward. 
that this can't be our king. Where, where's his crown and camel train? <laughs> and they, they, these were eating camels. They were camel eating theologians. <laughs> Straining nuts and eating camels. Two days in, after Santa Claus has left, two days after Christmas, hot cross buns are on the shelf already. Hot cross buns. You know, Australia uh, uh, just goes from one pagan season to the next. There's not even a break. You don't even get breathing time. <sighs> hot cross buns. I haven't found them in the scriptures, but hot cross buns. They associate that with Easter. It's not in the scriptures. There's no Easter in the scriptures. Just the, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're supposed to carry about the dying of Christ daily within us. Daily. Carry it in us. And every single day we get opportunity to die to something or live on. We either choose to be crucified with him or should I say crucify the old man and let the new man rise up and we're going to be a lot better off but no most people say no oh, I know what I'm doing no you don't otherwise Jesus wouldn't have came and said I am the way <laughs> he would have said you are the way but you're not the way Jose Yahweh is the way Amen. Hot cross buns. Galatians 4, 8 to 11. 2 Corinthians 4, 10. And Acts 17, 11, of course. Acts 17, 11. You've got to check to see what the minister is saying always. That's why it's good that, that we record the message. We record the message here. There's nothing I have to hide. It will be spot on. Because it's Father ministering through me by the power of the Holy Ghost. Don't worry about what you will say. The Holy Ghost does not contradict himself. The Holy Ghost does not lie. He's the spirit of truth. Someone say amen. amen. Yeah. So let me say that um, daughters... A daughter of a, 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 a New York doctor says that uh, her father helped Donald Trump, one part of it there, to avoid uh, being drafted to Vietnam. So Donald Trump is, is also a coward, not just a liar and a deceiver. So Donald Trump, like George Bush, is, both of them are draft dodgers. That's not a hero to me. That's a coward. Especially for those people because they're not born again. It's a different story when we're born again, isn't it? African youth. Now they're brawling and, and stealing people's mobile phones and, and uh, purses while they're swimming in the ocean. They're taking them off the beach now in a prominent Melbourne beach. Why am I mentioning these things? Because these are all signs of the times. These are all what Jesus said. Lawlessness will abound. The time will come when lawlessness will abound. And it's abounding everywhere. It's even in the, the parliaments. It's in the churches. Lawlessness. Businessmen not paying their tax. Christian businessmen hiring workers and and uh, paying them under the table. They call themselves Christian. This one really got me. Katy Perry. She is a famous singer, pop singer and lesbian. It, it took me a while to process this. She has a hundred million followers on Twitter. On Twitter. Well... I have 17, but I mean, <laughs> next. <laughs> but I'm not a lesbian and I'm not a pagan. Katy Perry, she came out of a, 
a Baptist house. Your parents were Baptists. Well, I'll let you work the rest out. 100 million followers on Twitter. What does 1 John 4, 4 to 6 say? Little children, if you were of the world, the world would love you and they will follow you on Twitter. If you are of the world. But you are not of the world, little children. Therefore they will not listen to you. Praise God. Bob Hawke, we all know who Bob Hawke is. And he's gasping his last breath. And Bob said that he doesn't know if he'll see me the, the next election. But I seen a photo of him on this article and he looked like death warmed up. He looked like a very worried, a very troubled man. And so he should be. And so should every man and every woman be troubled and worried to no end if they don't walk with Jesus. He's another one, just like Elvis and Frank Sinatra who did it their way. Had the platform, could have turned millions to Jesus. Could have mentioned the name Jesus, Jesus, Jesus every day. They had the platform. Donald Trump, he could mention the name Jesus every day on every Twitter, on every tweet of his Twitter. I feel sad for them because it's going to be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than it will be for them on the Day of Judgment. Hallelujah. So Bob Hawke has had his day in the sun. Like the rich man in Lazarus. The rich man had his day. But then it came time, didn't it? Like it does for all of us. The day of death comes suddenly like a snare upon a bird and like a net upon a fish. So the day of death comes. No one knows the day. We better be ready now. I don't know if I'll see tonight. I don't know if I'll see tomorrow. So I'm going to say it now. I'm going to make it very clear now. Because if the watchman does not make the sound of the trumpet clear, how will the people prepare themselves? How will they prepare for war? How will they prepare to war with the powers of darkness and the evil one? They won't be able to. Because they'll be all lackadaisical. They'll be all maybe could be. Oh, I'm lukewarm. But I'm still going to heaven. Who said so? Not Jesus. Revelation 3.16 Because you are lukewarm and you are neither hot nor cold. I say to you, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Cain, what is it? What's his name? K N West? K N? Someone say it properly. Say again? Kanye. Kanye. That's how much I know about this fellow. Kanye West. He's been in the White House in the last few months. I couldn't believe what he said when he took one of Donald Trump's hats, one of his red hats with Trump on it or something. Kenya or Kanye West, he said, when I put your hat on, he said to Donald Trump, I couldn't believe it. I, I felt like Superman. Hey? I felt like Superman when I put on, when he put on Donald Trump's red hat. Well, that tells you something again, doesn't it? The days we live in. Hey? We see the tsunami in Indonesia. And we see it came out of nowhere. As soon as I seen it, I thought of what the Lord said, that he will come at a time that nobody knows. Now playing more joyfully on their guitars and singing, playing their keyboards, everything was fine. The beer was flowing, the drugs were going, you know, the loose ladies were running around, Jezebelling. Everyone was happy, as you would say, in the world. And then the wave came from behind, bang, as it was in the days of Noah. Just came out of Noah. And then, then they're now they're, they're dead. Hey? 
there's, there's 1,500 injured and, and four or 500 dead in just one way. And they blame Mother Nature. They don't understand that Mother Nature has a father. His name is Jesus. That creation is under the power of the Creator. Oh no. It's either Mother Nature or, or it's... What else did they say it is? The devil. <laughs> That's the devil destroying our sin time. No, it's not. The devil wants you to have a great sin time. Dancing and drinking, eating and drinking. <clears throat> the Lord says to us not to think beyond what is written. Can we turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 4? I'll just get this prelude out of the way so we can go into the message. But I feel it necessary to say these things. 1 Corinthians 4, 6. Now these things, brethren, I have figuratively transferred to myself and Apollos for your sake that you may learn in us not to think beyond what is written. Someone say amen. amen. Learn in us not to think beyond what is written. 1 Corinthians 4, 6. That none of you may be puffed up on behalf of one against the other. You see? Didn't say, it doesn't say do. It says don't even think. Don't even think. Don't even, don't go any further than the scriptures, please. Because you're going to end up in trouble. And you've got a lot of these people out there, they're into all sorts of books. They, they get that, uh, oh, it's the devil himself. They go into these bookstores, you know. And they walk in, they oh, you know, they think they're in a warehouse of knowledge. I'm going to get some old book with the cover falling off, you know, and, and it's going to have all this wisdom. I ain't going to be no wisdom in there. You're thinking beyond the good book. We're the people of the book. The Muslims say, kill the people of the book. <laughs> they tried to kill me a couple of times, but it didn't work. Or they get on the internet and they go to all these different sites. Oh, he's saying this. And the more flowery, the more flowery it is and, oh, acceptable to their lifestyle, they get right into it then. Oh, and it suits me. Oh, it's a lovely fit. I won't wear humility anymore. I'll wear this foreign god. I won't wear Jesus. It's too hard. It's too hard to follow Jesus and make money. Of course it is. <laughs> That's the way Jesus designed it. <laughs> don't go, don't even think beyond the scripture. It's dangerous. 40,000 people died from gunshot in the USA in 2017. 40,000. Why am I saying this? Day of death comes suddenly. Be ready now. Don't wait till they give you... Oh, no, I'm waiting till the New Year's uh, uh, Eve to make my New Year's resolution. Too late. No. Too late. Sorry. Lady Diane of Wales. Oh, I'm waiting for my New Year's resolution next year. Too late. Smash. Oh. Accident. Dead. Oh. Didn't sort it out. You don't hear this sort of message in the churches today. It's not popular. You won't put bums on seats. You won't fill the car park with this sort of talk, I can tell you now. 
But I'm not here to fill car parks. I'm not here to put bums on seats. I'm here to deliver the message that the Lord has given me and whoever comes through the door, comes through the door. But I can tell you one thing. The Lord will have come here whom he will have come here. <laughs> Everyone said, amen. And amen, and amen, and amen. Two to five billion dollars is spent on Christmas presents every year. And the world loves Christmas. Now you know why. Hey? Scott Morrison, the Prime Minister of Australia, his Christmas message was basically hope, hope, and more hope, and they were hoping for rain. But Scott Morrison never bothered to forecast that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and repent and seek my face and pray, I will hear from heaven. And then I will heal their land. We don't hear about repent is a, a swear word these days. Amen. Amen. Well, you just don't get the votes. You're not going to get the votes. It's, it's coming up to the election and you're not going to get the votes. And everyone's about votes. Everyone's about themselves. Everyone's edemic these days. Even the churches are edemic. Oh, we do Christmas for the children. Stuff Jesus. Oh, oh I thought you'd done everything for Jesus. Oh, hang on a minute. I better check that. I thought Jesus said you'd been bought. Oh, I thought Jesus said that we belong to him now. I must be thinking of another Jesus. Or they have another Jesus. Look, if Jesus is not Lord, you are. <laughs> it's simple as that. If Jesus is not Lord, you are Lord. Did you know that in Russia, you can be a billionaire on Monday and you can be on the street on Friday in Russia, a billionaire on Monday. And then you can be on the street a beggar on Friday if you say something against the government. You see the power? It, that's like sort of, a, that sort of brought to my mind the mark of the beast, you know. You will not buy or sell or eat. You won't run a business without the mark of the beast. I don't believe I'll be around for that, but I could be wrong. Hey? Let's move into the message today. We're going to be reading out of Matthew chapter 7. Very simple verses. Very profound. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. We're going to start reading now. Hey? Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, done many wonders in your name, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice sin, you who practice lawlessness. We know what is evil. We know that evil stands for everything that violates the instruction of the law of God, of the Lamb. Sin is evil, it's nothing less. Don't try and call it anything less because you're, become, you're moving into the satanic realm. 
The devil calls sin less than what it is. But sin is sin. Sin is damnable and sin is evil. It's violating the instructions of the Lamb. Jesus said, if you had no sin, better still, Jesus said, if I did not tell you your sin, you would have no sin. If I did not tell you you were evil, you would not be, wouldn't even know you were evil. And everyone said, but when I found out I was evil, and my middle name was misery, I, I was evil. You know, I, I, was, I was an evil man. I was a man that violated, E-V-I-L. I violated the instructions of the Lamb. So as we enter into another year, Father willing, we will see the new year. If God wills, we shall live tomorrow. That's okay with me. If I don't live another day because Father knows best. I, I haven't planned anything that I want to do. I don't have a, bu a bucket list. I don't even have a thimble list. <laughs> Let alone a bucket list. Hey, there's no sinning that I want need to do. I think I've done them all. Hey, so we've been concentrating. This is our fourth part on the immediate and the ultimate. And we know the world likes the immediate. They want to see it now. They want it now, and they want it all now. And. I think it was last week that we looked at that tragic day. Before that, in part two, it was God is not a season. God is not a season. Easter, Christmas, uh, birthdays, or what? God, God is omni, omnipresent. He, he's omnipotent, all powerful. He, he's omniscient he's all knowing we can't put God in a day we, we, we can't put God in our ministry can't be we have to come into him I'm in his ministry I'm not in, in my ministry I'm in his ministry because I know his ministry works but it only works for the believer. And we know what a believer is, don't we? He and she is a doer. Not someone that says, I believe. I believe. You're saved. No, the demons believe, but they do not tremble and they do not obey. I should say the demons believe and tremble, but they do not obey. Church people don't even tremble. They say that's wrong. We shouldn't be trembling. You shouldn't be revering God or fearful of God. But the Word of God says that we are to tremble at His Word. Those who fear and tremble at His Word. Of a contrite spirit, even if you're of a broken heart, the Lord is near to that one to help. But it's always on His terms, isn't it? It's not on our terms or a denomination's terms or an orthodox religion's terms. That's the way it's been for centuries. And look at the results. You've got all these temples around the place. And look, there's, there's very little of Jesus there, if anything at all. Very little. Lots of uh, activity. Lots of courses. Lots of hoopla. Lots of music. But we don't see music. We don't see music teams. And Paul saying, oh, we've got to get the music team together. It's coming up to Christmas. We've got to get in the Kmart in Jerusalem and get Jesus the present. That's not there, is it? So, Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone. There will be some, but not everyone 
Who says to me, Lord, Lord? There will be some. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 confirms that, doesn't it? Narrow. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way that leads to life and there are few who find it. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord. We've got millions and millions, tens of millions of people say that Jesus is Lord. It's a money-making business. Jesus is Lord, you know, like parrots. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. But the sad part is he's not their Lord. And I've mentioned this a million times. He's not their Lord. Hey? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Is that the promotion of the churches today? The will of Father. Is that the promotion? Is that what we're hearing? To do Father's will. Or to do a denominational will. Or to do Pope Francis' will. Or, or to do our own will. Or to do what we will when we want. Because we're saved by grace. Without faith. John. Can we go to John please? Writings of John. The immediate or the ultimate. Which way are we going? Hey? Will he know you when he comes back that day? That's the punchline here today. Will he know you when he comes back? He won't know you. If you've chosen the immediate, no one can choose the immediate and be recognised by Jesus on the day. John 14 and the verses 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. What do you think of that? We've heard this before. That's what's missing in the church. The manifestation. And where there's no manifestation... There's all these substitutes. He who has my commandments. This is Jesus speaking. John 14, 21. He who has my commands. He's not going to ask that of people in the street. Those who have his command. They must keep them. You're required to keep them. It is he who loves me. Oh, I love Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. It is he who loves me. Oh, I love Jesus. Have you got his commands? As they say to me in the streets for decades, Oh, I love Jesus, but I don't read the Bible. I'm not interested in the Bible. <laughs> there you have it there. He who has my commands and keeps them. It is he who loves me. <laughs> and he who loves me will be loved by my Father. But they say that God loves everyone. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. And once you've had the manifestation of Jesus and that divine encounter, I tell you what, there's no more poking and prodding and pushing by the pastor. He doesn't have to poke, prod, remind you a hundred times, do this, do that, blah, blah. No, no, 
No, you go on from glory to glory and strength to strength. From milk to, to meat, you go on and grow up. Become accountable for your own salvation and sort your own salvation out with fear and trembling before the Lord. Not before men and women. There's heaps of people that sort their salvation out before men and women, you know, oh, yeah, and I do this and I do that. Everything's okay while you're getting the happy snaps. But what's going on in your war? Cut the happy snaps for a couple of years and let's see how the attitude is. It's sort of like withdrawals, isn't it, from sugar or something. I went for two decades without a happy snap. <laughs> they didn't have mobile phones when I was having my teeth broken on the gravel. Right? When I was fasting in, in, in uh, prayer mountains with heat 40 degree in the dirt, eating dirt. Sleeping in a stinking hot uh, container. You know the shipping container? With no windows. And just letting the Lord deal with me, you know? And sort me out. Have me serving and, and cleaning the shoes of a pastor. Emptying my pockets, whatever I had after cutting broccoli in the Lockyer Valley, come home empty my pockets out on the pastor's table. Yeah, how's that? And drinking hot water after that. And go back to my container. Until I got called by the pastor to say, come on, I want to go up to Kabulcha, there's a meeting up there with the Jewish people. Celebration Shalom. You're going to be driving. Okay, I'm coming. <laughs> sort of like, you know, a David and a Saul. You know, David and King Saul, you know. But, that's what the Lord wants. The, 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 the Lord is, wants to purge the threshing floor. He, he wants to purge. Now, actually it says, that the Lord will thoroughly purge his threshing floor. Thoroughly purge. That's not going to be any party. Hey? Back in Matthew 7, 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. And we know that's Father's will. We, we, we know that's Father's will that we obey Jesus. Luke 8.21 There my brother, sister and mother, hear the word of God and do it. Very severe that encounter was with Jesus and the man Jesus and his mother at the door. With, it, with the brothers and sisters, hey, Jesus, your mother's outside. Oh, you, you, you know, the church is today. Oh, the pastor's mother's outside. Oh, stop everything. Oh. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus said, hey, they're my mother, sister and brother, who hear the word of God and do it. And everyone said... Amen. Hallelujah! There's no partiality with Jesus. He was going to wipe Mary. He said, if Mary doesn't want to toe the line, she's out too. We don't hear that preaching, do we? In the churches today, is all this family first. I don't find that in my Bible. I don't find family first in my Bible. That, that's speaking that, and thinking beyond what is written. But I do find in Matthew 10, 
34 to 39. Unless you love me more than your mother, sister and brother, unless you love me more than your relatives, you're not worthy of me. I did not come to bring peace as the world would bring peace. I came to bring a sword. And that will divide the house up. And there's three in the house and only one believes. It's not going to be easy for you. And Brother Blade knows that. Brother Blade's in a house and there's family members that don't really believe in the real Jesus of the Bible and it's a living hell. And they're mocking him all the time. Family members. And those of your own house will be your enemy. Oh, I don't want to hear that. I don't like the Jesus you preach. Well, look, there's the door. You got your right to get home or you want me to ring a taxi? Just tell them to send me the bill. Put it on my account. Hallelujah. This is what we're getting down to, you know. Oh, oh Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Is he Lord? Is he? Is he really Lord? Of you. Of course he's Lord. I think everyone knows that. I knew that when I was going to a convent. Jesus is Lord. Yeah, it didn't change me. I was still a lion, still a thieving lion, little crook. Brawling in, in, in first grade. I got born of Lord Jesus. And you know when you're born of Lord Jesus, you got that DNA. You got that DNA in you. You got the Jesus DNA, you know. And the Jesus DNA doesn't wrestle and fight you when you speak the truth. When you got the Jesus DNA, when you're born again from above. Not born again, born again, born again. But born again from above. New creature, brand new man, plastic still on the doors, Manuel love Emmanuel in the club box. Woo! Jesus! Oh! Jesus! Ah! I'm feeling, I'm going to start preaching in a minute. <laughs> when we got that DNA, there's no arguments, is there? People want to get religious. They want to go back to the Old Testament shadow because it suits them. They want to start threatening the congregation. If you don't give your 10%, God will curse you. Oh, I tell you what, God's going to curse you, preacher, for lying to the congregation. And God does curse. And you don't believe me? You go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verses 15 to 68. 53 verses on cursing by God. Oh, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. Of course he is. Yeah. John chapter 14 verse 24. He who does not love me does not keep my words. There you go. He who does not love me does not keep my words. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. Don't give me this religious stuff. You say you love Jesus? Do you do what he says? Well, you don't love him. <laughs> you know, my wife, I know she loves me, but she don't have to be kissing me all the time. <laughs> She doesn't do that. If I say something has to be done, it will be done. Those who do Father's will, they will enter the kingdom. It, it's so easy. That's all that has to be done. At the end of the day, just do what he says. When Jesus said, jump, don't ask why, ask how high. Verse 24, John 14, He who does not love me does not keep my word, and the word which you hear is not mine but Father's who sent me. See that? 
his father's work. So our message today on the judgment day. What's going to happen? It's frightening. Last week we looked at Esau uh, and we called it that tragic day. And Esau partook of the bowl of soup, pottage, bowl of soup, bowl of soup. And Esau gave preference to his belly rather than to the Lord. And we all give preference to something or someone other than the Lord if we're not, if Jesus is not Lord. Many are going to come and say, Lord, Lord. How many? Many. Verse 22, Matthew 7. Many will say to me, many. How many? Many. Many. Many are going to come and say, Lord, Lord. We must keep that attitude of choosing the ultimate. Choosing the Lord above everything, even though it might be painful. You know, even if it's painful, you know it's going to do a work. There's going to be a work done for the chastening of the Lord is grievous for a season. But it will eventually work the peaceable fruit of righteousness for them who are trained by it and those who will accept it and bite the bullet and go forward. There were years, years in my life I was on my own and the pain that I went through was not human. And I thought at the time it was very unfair of Jesus. But now I realise, I realise it was a blessing that the Lord was preparing for me. A great blessing. That I would accept what he had, what he had prepared, Go forward, go through it, and come out the other side. And today, 31 years later, well, I don't have the words to describe my walk with Jesus. There's no rubbish from the world in this ministry. There's no rubbish from the churches in this ministry. I never come out of some stinking, rotten, confused Bible college. No man taught me. And no woman taught me. And no religion taught me. But Jesus. Yoking up with Jesus. Saying, Jesus. Son of David, have mercy on me. <laughs> you see, when Jesus calls, it's everything. When you call yourself, there is a lot of doubt. But when Jesus calls and says, you, come here. You know it's all sewn up. It's already done. And the Lord shows you the cross. And the Lord shows you what he said at the cross. It's finished. All has been accomplished. It is finished. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to travel on the other side of the world to get some special water to sprinkle on your ears. You don't have to go to Mitchagori. You don't have to go to the Pope. You don't have to go to some religious organisation and bow down and become their lapdog. You don't have to go anywhere because I called you, hallelujah, with a holy calling. I knew you before you were born. Boenergy. Oh, son of thunder. That's everything. That is everything. When you can hop in your car and drive anywhere in the country, walk into a hall, set up the podium, put your Bible there and preach the power of God. You don't need all the trimmings and the fan club. You just know 
Something's going to happen. <laughs> when I went into Rockhampton and I hired this little, little, little hall. This is a, this is a huge auditorium compared to the hall I was in. <laughs> and no one was there. And I advertised during the week on my brochures. I said there'll be a meeting at the hall. And all the churches, religious hypocrites, they all worked against me. Stay away from that man. He's of the devil. I thought, well, I'm being exalted already. They call Jesus the devil. So they put me on par with Jesus already. <laughs> and I held the meeting that night at 7 o'clock. It was a hot summer's night. Donna Summers wasn't there. And... <laughs> I opened up the windows in the hall, preached away, the prodigal son. And me, being a man who believes in the power of the spoken word and the power of the, sprint, uh, the printed word, just kept preaching. There's no one there. But I just kept preaching. And then a man was sitting in the lane in the gutter no shirt, no shoes, just a pair of jeans, sitting in that gutter and through the crack of the window, the windows were all open because it was that hot. And I was sweating. And in Rockhampton you get about 40 degree heat. And I seen him get up and come in the dark. Knock on the door and said, can I come in? I heard what you said, I will like to receive Jesus. <laughs> just that one. Sort of reminded me of the ten lepers, and only one was saved. The others were cleansed, and as it says, and we're reading today in Matthew, Lord, Lord, many have been cleansed. Many have been born again. Many have come to the Lord, but they're not with the Lord today. They're dead. Their relationship is dead with Jesus. Actually, they're twice dead, pulled up by the roots. They're clouds without rain. They're spots in your love feast. And everybody said, Hallelujah! They're not with him today. We know that Jesus, in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, he spoke to that church let's go to Revelation 3 he spoke to that church in Sardis Revelation 3 1 and 2 the pastor of the church in Sardis or that would be the angel Write these things, John. These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works that you have a name that you are alive, but you are now dead. Revelation 3, 1, that was. Two, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found your works perfect. Oh, why are not supposed to be perfect? Before God, remember therefore how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. But they say you don't have to repent. But it says here do repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names, even in Silas, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Verse 5, he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and his angel. He has an ear, let him hear. So it's obvious these people in Matthew 7, 21, their names were blotted out. It's obvious. It's a type of blotting out. 
We know that. These were people of God. You can't prophesy, as it says in Matthew 7, verse 22. Matthew 7, 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in your name. We cast our demons in your name. You can't do that without the Holy Spirit. You can't cast out a demon in the name of a demon or in the name of the devil. You have to have the Spirit of God. But this is a type. It's in the four square gospel. It's a type. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. And the four square gospel is the letters concealed. And the four square gospel, uh, the, the letters are the four square gospel revealed and, 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 and expounded upon. We prophesied. We cast out devils. <clears throat> a lot of people doing a lot of things out there. A lot of people prioritizing souls, souls, souls. Benny Hinn was a good one. Soul, soul, souls, winning the lost at any cost. That's not the priority of the church. The priority of the Roman Catholic Church is the church. Come home to Mother Church. But the priority of the Holy Remnant Church or the Church of the Living Christ is Christ. <laughs> the head of the church. That's the priority. He's the priority. Not mum, dad and the children. Not Auntie Betty. Not, not the poor, the sick or the unsaved. They're not the priority of the church. You've got to do Father's will. They're my brother, sister, mother, hear the word of God and do it. And I can say that freely because we, we evangelize daily. And I, I've evangelized and looked for the lost for 31 years. Daily. So I'm not speaking against evangelizing. And just because you go out there and distribute literature and tell someone about Jesus... It doesn't mean you're an evangelist. You're just evangelizing. An evangelist is gifted. A pastor is gifted. A pastor is not someone that the Bible college says, oh, I think you're a pastor. Oh, you come to college for three years, we'll give you a piece of paper, you pay $3,000 and you get your piece of paper, we recognise you, but God doesn't. Gifted. Gifted, remember what the Lord said. Gifted, don't go even thinking beyond what is written. Ephesians 4.11 He who ascended and descended gave gifts to men. No women mentioned. Gave gifts to men. Apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher and evangelist. Gifts. That's what intrigues me about the whole thing for the last 31 years. I didn't know anything. Nothing. But he gifted me to do what I do for 31 years. Spain, England, Africa, New York, Vegas, Philippines, through Australia. Living in comfort and living in swallow. <laughs> whether in much or whether in little. I rejoice in the Lord. Whether in lack or whether in bounty and plentiful. I rejoice. In the Lord, because He's the premium. He is the uh, my inheritance. Let's turn to Psalm sixteen, please. He is my everything. Hey? Psalm 16 verse 5 He's the portion He's the portion 16 5 Psalm 16 5 says O Lord you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup you maintain my lot the lines have fallen to me in pleasant places yes I have a good inheritance 
He's the portion. You can't do it without him being the portion. Unless he's preeminent. You'll be taken under in the, in the rip. You'll be taken under in the rip of humanity or money or, or fame or fortune. The, the, the tide will drag you down unless Jesus is your portion of your inheritance. And you might come into something... And, but he has to be above that. He has to be above. Oh, portion of my cup. Oh. That was just absolutely beautiful. But you're above that Jesus. Not like Esau. Last week, the portion of, uh, of his cup was that soup. Not Jesus. Number one, preeminence. The Jesus. So, on that, on the judgment day. Terrifying. I mean, it's terrifying enough. It's terrifying enough to die, you know, like to lose family members or lose your job or become handicapped overnight. Or, but the judgment day, that's the title of the message today, on the judgment day. Many will... Say to me in that day. Don't even bother to speak. Because he already knows. Oh, oh, here we are. Oh, look, trying to justify themselves. Oh, Lord, Lord. We did, we did, we did. He knows what you did. You didn't do what he said. You've done a lot of other things, but you didn't do what he said. Oh, but, but. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we prophesied, we cast out demons, and, and even done wonders. How can you do wonders in the name of Jesus if you don't know Jesus? These are churches. These are backslidden, sardis churches. These, these, these are churches and where ministers have told the congregation, you can't have your name removed from the book of life, but the word of God says clearly you can. You can forfeit your salvation. You can lose your salvation. You can die. Your relationship with Jesus can die. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. Through the one Lord Jesus. Matthew 7 and the verses 23. And then I will declare. I never knew you. Depart from me. You who practice laws. I never knew you. So how do we work that out? They're casting out demons. They're prophesying. They're doing wonders. They're doing all sorts of things. And everyone's following on. And everyone's oblivious to the truth. But they're just following on because they see the immediate. They're looking at the immediate. They're looking at all the crowds. They're looking at all the hoopla and all the singing and the carry on. And they get swept away in, in a torrent of false doctrine. But Jesus is going to say, I don't want to know you. And they never really did have that relationship with Jesus that they should have had. <laughs> you know, Peter, he had a relationship with Jesus, but it wasn't the one it should have been. And then he denied Jesus tries and the rooster was crowing. And he broke down and wept bitterly. And we never hear of Peter playing up again, do we? No. The prodigal son. And, and he played up and he went his way. But we never hear of him. There's only the Holy Ghost fire here, don't worry. There's nothing on fire here, only us. <laughs> don't worry about it, Brother Thomas. Every time I preach, this happens. I don't care if I'm in the Philippines or I'm in Spain, there's always fire brigades going around wherever I'm preaching. <laughs> Holy Ghost and fire! Ow! Oh! Woo! Keeping me alive! Ah! Yeah, so... Lord, Lord. 
You know, you don't see the people in the world saying to Jesus, Oh Lord, it's not in them. They're not the people of the world. This is a warning. We're getting very close, so close it's close. And on the judgment day, you know, there's no room. Don't even bother opening your mouth. Just stand there. Because he already knows. He knows all things. He's omniscient. Oh, but Lord, we did this. As if doing something is going to change anything. And as if me winning a thousand people to Jesus this afternoon is going to change the judgment for me in my relationship with Jesus. It's between me and him. It's between you and him. You, you, you can fool the people most of the time, but you can't fool Jesus any of the time. <laughs> I can tell you. You can do all the fairy, hairy things in the world. You, you, you know? You can have the biggest church in the world. And you know what? I've noticed one prominent, uh, consistent flaw in every big, big church in the world. They don't have the bona fide, unadulterated truth. You look at Yonki Joe. He got all kinds of teachings in there. He's got all kinds of spirits. Hey? Reverend Sun Moon. Whew. Apollo Quibaloy. These are all big, big charlatans in the eyes of Edemic believers. Hillsong. Chris Oyakalomi. All these people, they don't have, they got a lot of show and glitter and falling on the ground. They're all falling down. But on Monday, they fall down and bow to the devil again. Go on in their sin. No power. Ain't got no power to overcome. But when Jesus is number one, when we do what he says, we have the power. We have the power to overcome all things. We can do all things through Christ. Not some things, all things. Paul the Apostle fought the fight. He ran the race. And he kept, he kept the fight. He kept it. He didn't trash it. He didn't put it aside. He kept the faith. Paul the Apostle didn't preach once saved, always saved. Absolute predestination, salvation, by election. He never preached it. Never preached Calvinism. Never preached Armenianism. Never preached Popism. Never preached denominationalism. Never preached orthodoxy. But Jesus was the most unorthodox preacher that ever struck terra firma. There was no one as more unorthodox as Jesus. So, let me say. Looks like we've got a fifth part. But on the judgment day, how scary it will be. They lived all their lives and they thought, oh, and in the back of their minds and in their hearts, they already had their alibi organised. It was already arranged in their heart. This is what I'm going to say to Jesus. How foolish. How foolish. I mean, that's just like Esau, isn't it? He said, I'll cry, and, and, and this teddy bear Jesus, he'll let me off the hook, you know. Because I'm a woman, you know, he going to let me off the hook. I'm just a woman. He ain't going to let you off the hook. Because I'm an old man, he going to let me off the hook, you know. He, he have sympathy on me. Oh, he ain't.
They already had their alibis sewn up. I, I, I know what I'll say. I'll say. What about this, Jesus? What about that? What about... That's why I say, when we take an offering here, hey, it's got nothing to do. You can't say to Jesus, well, I gave so much, and I gave so much, and I done this. He'll say, listen, man, I gave you a thousand times more than that in your life. You remember when you were dying and I let you live? Remember when you had that heart attack and I saved you? Do you remember what happened when you fell out of that building? and you cracked your head and done all this, and I healed you, you remember all that? You're trying to tell me that your tithes and offerings covers that? But that's what they're doing here. Oh, but we did this and we did that. And Jesus said, you can't buy your way to heaven, man. You ain't going to do good deeds and get to my kingdom. You've got to do what I say. Oh, I don't want to hear this. I was hoping i would be more of a sunny Sunday sermon, you know what I mean? I'm just going to tell you the truth, man, because I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. And if I don't tell you the truth, I'm not going to get blown. Because when I get home tonight, usually around 6 o'clock, I just chill back. I get a cup of tea and power of God's all over me. And I just bask in it. Yeah, man. Woo! And he thought, I hear this, well done, my true and faithful servant. Because you said what had to be said. Everyone said? Amen. You can say, oh my, or what? I'm going to say, hallelujah. <laughs> uh, Paul the Apostle said he held back nothing. Acts 20, 20. That was helpful. Held back nothing that was helpful. He did not shun to proclaim the full counsel of God. He had not the blood of any soul, man or woman, on his hands. Everyone said. Amen. Yeah, we'll go in to part five next week of the immediate and the ultimate. I want the ultimate. The immediate? Nah, it's too flaky. It's tempering. This world is tempering. Everything's tempering. It's all dying. As I was standing here preaching to you, my whole body died before you. You didn't even know it. I was dying. My hair fell out on the ground and, and, and my teeth, they started to decay a bit more and, and my skin wrinkled a bit more. You just didn't see that wrinkle there. So. The outward man is perishing but the inward man is going forth. Everybody said. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.